Hello everyone and welcome to the Cyclocross Social Podcast. Today we're going to take a look ahead at the World Cup in Antwerp and with me here to do that is Issam. Thank you for being here again, Issam. Yes, thank you for having me. Have you recovered yet from your big win against Belgium? I definitely have. Uh, victorious, so uh, we need only one more match and then um, if we win that we are through to the last 16. So surprising, but... Uh... I'm quite happy. It will always be funny that they scheduled the Hulst cross so early in the morning just so all the Belgians could watch them lose against Morocco. Of course, now I'm waiting for this to bite me when uh, on Saturday the Netherlands is playing against the United States and the Netherlands will go out of the World Cup. But, well, that will be that. First of all, before we get ahead into the World Cup in Antwerp, we need to tell you about Wout van Aert, who's making his comeback He's starting his season there in Antwerp on the Sint Anneke beach. And you can watch that action live and uninterrupted on GCN+. Go to gcn.eu slash cxsocial for a 25% discount on your annual GCN Plus subscription so you don't miss any of the action because boy, it's going to be tasty. World Cup in Antwerp, Issam, what do you think? the course because Verveke he made a real masterpiece out of it again <laughs> a real master, masterpiece indeed I mean he uh, he definitely took took his time I guess on, on this course because uh, there's a lot of it's it's definitely a bit different from what it was you know a lot of turns there's definitely an interesting part at the start the sand is is maybe going to play play quite a role in, in, in this race a lot of turning is quite technical and yeah, you know, we already know that that Antwerp is or Antwerp is is really a course that more normally is a bit flat with those really small punchy hills, and um, the the sand is definitely going to play. I think if the sand really is is going to be a bit tough, it's going to play a big role. But I think overall the course is um, interesting. It's a lot. Uh, you can if you are on one place you can see the riders go by you know four or five times so it's uh, it's interesting to see that and you know Vervec definitely put a lot of effort in this course I guess Vervec's courses are always interesting sometimes they have a bit too much extreme features also for the riders I mean these mogul sections in Neil they are not loved by the riders but Whatever, here in Antwerp the course seems to change every other year and it's again a big overhaul compared to what we had with the Belgian Championships. I feel like they're losing touch with their roots because remember back to 2013, Roger van der Poel got his first ever elite podium here. It was only a first year under 23 then, but the course was super simple. It was sand with some connection sections in between. Back then there was also this super interesting technical feature which had a 180 degree banked corners in the sand and some riders were taking wide lines, others were taking the inside line, other riders were running. I don't see those features on this course. The grass section where the hill is around the VIP then that's become more and more important throughout the years and I feel like that led to Antwerp losing its connection with its roots as a pure sand cross. When Sveik became Belgian champion, it's a big myth that that was because of the way that he handled the sand. There really was not too much involvement of the sand in that race. So yeah, that's definitely how I also feel about this course, some new features, but hard to tell how it will go. New, well, not entirely new, but new this year is Wout van Aert racing a cyclocross race. He's kicking off his campaign here in Antwerp. What do you expect? Last year he flew in with an absolute screamer in Boom. Do you expect that he will do the same here or now with Van der Poel and a fit Pitcock and also a very strong Laurens Zweig on this course? Do you think that he might struggle against those? Well, if you're going to compare the, the performance that he had at, in Boom, where you know he blew everybody away, I don't think it will be the same. Um, because obviously the course will not give him that ability of, of, of stretching the whole field out and and, and you know making uh, those those big gains because I think that he can utilize some of his power but you know just with the sand and the amount of turns it's also going to be quite technical compared to a bone which was quite straightforward and, and you know it was really uh, a, a real power course in a way and it's for him obviously you know the better the race to start and I think now it's it's not going to suit him that much, uh, but I have been um, 
also about the chances of Van der Poel and Hulst. I have also been a bit downplaying that and thinking that he was not going to be able to be on the podium. And I almost um, felt that I had a heart attack when I saw him in the first lap going so fast through the field. And, you know, with Van Aert, it's just also very hard to place him right now somewhere. But, you know, I think with the qualities that he has, he's definitely going to be able to, to fight for a podium. And I think just really looking at this course a win is going to be very difficult and I'm just very interested to see how he is on the bike, how he feels and how he goes, you know, through the course. Van Aert has been downplaying the expectations almost as usual and I guess that's also pretty normal because you don't want to have the pressure. He said, well, I've been sick, I've had a cold, needed to postpone my start, would have liked to start in Kortrijk, having a bit of injuries, having a bit of pain... But I think he will be fine. If he will really be struggling from that, he wouldn't start his season. Much of the pool said that, and I tend to agree with him on that. Van Aert before the Tour de France also said something like that to take away the pressure and skip the Belgian championships. And then, well, look how he dominated the Tour. Yeah, that was definitely something else. So Van Aert will be fine. He will be in contention for the podium. I would agree with you on that. But this is a good course for Van der Poel. Van der Poel and Hulse was already good. It will be, well, having a similar starting position now. Of course, every week he will be moving up the rankings and increasing his, well, starting position. He will be starting further from the front. That's just the logic itself. But he will still need to overtake riders. And again, Antwerp doesn't seem to be the easiest course to do so with how technical the first part is. But in Hulst, it didn't seem to hamper him either. I would say that Maciej van der Poel is definitely the top favorite here. And Van Aert and Zweig come a close second and third. Again, not too high on Pitcock. This time not because of his form level, but because of the sandness of this course. Again, it's hard to judge. I don't know how tough the sand will be, but I assume that there will be enough sand because it's Antwerp. It's on a beach or next to a beach. So there has to be sand, surely. And then I'm not reckoning Pitcock too much because, well, he's just not the best sand rider there is. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you can be very technical and very good on a bike, but you know, riding on sand is is, is it's just a different technique, and you really need to you need to have the feeling to go to go through the sand. And Sveik is definitely one of those guys that can do that. Van der Poel, if he has his day, is can be superb in in, in the sand as well. Van Aert normally gets his way through the sand as well. He improved over the years a little bit, I think, and. You know, for Pitcock, it always has been some sort of a struggle. So if the sand actually is going to play a role, I, you know, I tend to agree with you on, on the chances of Pitcock. But, you know, if if it's going to be all running, uh, then it's going to be completely different. If the sand actually is not going to play that much of a role and it's quite difficult to get through the sand, you know, then it might actually, you know, um, not not be that that much of a of a point in the race and. Then Pitcock, I think, with the form which he's in right now, is definitely one of one of the podium contenders. Yeah, there's just too many unknowns about the course. And because we didn't race here last year and it's changed and the map isn't too detailed, even if I overlay it on Google Maps, I can't get a clear enough picture to really be confident in any of my picks. But I would definitely fancy Macho van der Poel because of his versatility. Like, he can do basically anything and... If the sand plays a role, it will boost him. We've seen him give absolutely masterclass rides in Coxida, which is the toughest sand cross there is. He can do anything. And when he started his season here in 2020, he won right away. Yes, Eli Isabit did be yeah, Isabit did try to beat him. He tried to follow him. He put up a really good fight there. That was, I think, the only time or one of the only times I saw Isabit actually being able to put up the fight against one of the so-called big three riders, Wout van Aert, Mathieu van der Poel and Tom Pitcock. Well, at least Wout van Aert and Mathieu van der Poel because he's been fighting Tom Pitcock for much longer. I'm definitely looking at van der Poel on this course then, as I said, because he can do anything. It doesn't really matter in what state it's here. But I'm super curious to see what Laurens Zweig can do here because he's been on fire this season. What do you think about his chances on this course? And we will probably come uh, come into it again. Well, depends how much sand there is, but what do you expect from him? 
Well, I think that he is going to be able to follow Van der Poel a little bit longer. Huh? I think in Hulst he did quite a good job in, um, you know, he, 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 he fell back a little bit and the difference was definitely there. It was visible. But I definitely think that Zweig was really, had really a good day in Hulst and really performed performed well in my opinion. And I think that in Antwerp, if the sand is, sand is really going to be in, uh, you know, playing a big part in this race, then he can... You know, definitely stay a little bit longer in the wheel of Van der Poel, but uh, to cause a big upset, obviously, you know, the sport is the sport, and we know that it has uh, definitely a, a lot of bad luck uh, involved. We have seen it with uh, with Pitcock in in Hulst as well, you know, and the race can then be decided by a mechanical or by certain mistakes. We have seen Van der Poel make some mistakes in Hulst as well, so I think that you know we shouldn't be counting out Zweig totally. But if the course goes normally and there are not really weird circumstances involved in the race, I think that Van der Poel is going to have the edge over Sveik. Yeah, I would definitely agree. But if he's able to put up a serious fight, he's already doing a very good job. I think it will be tough to beat Van der Poel. He's been looking good so far. Sveik is also defending a super prestige lead the day before in Boom. Okay, Van der Poel will also be racing there, but he doesn't have the freshness effect. He doesn't have the upper hand because he didn't race the day before. It's going to be interesting. I expect that this will not be a blow win by Van der Poel. I don't expect him to attack at the end of the first lap and go solo. There's definitely still things for him to work on as we saw on Hulst, but it's going to be good. My favorite, again, I come to Van der Poel, Sveik. He's going to be fighting for second, I guess, with Wout van Aert. But Van Aert, well, yes, he has a better starting position than Van der Poel. I don't know. It's again a question mark. Where where does his form lie? How well? How much training has he done on the cross bike? Judging by Strava, quite a bit. He's not coming in as cold as much of on the pool. Last year in Boom, he flew in. As you said, I don't expect that this year. Simply already due to the course. It's a bit more technical. You need a bit more racing under your belt to tackle a course like this. Van Aert is a decent sand rider, but not the best sand rider in the world. Sveik, I would argue, is a better rider through the sand. Where do I place Van Aert? Well, probably, as I just said, in a fight for second. I would say that Van der Poel, Van Aert, Sveik, maybe Pitcock, easier beat. Van der Haar will be a front group for halfway, for the half of the race, kind of like we saw on Hulst. And then around the halfway mark, Van der Poel will drop the rest and the group will be falling apart and then you get Swake fighting against Van Aert for second. That's at least how I envision the race going now. And yeah, it's, again, I'm, I'm not too confident because there's still many question marks, but I feel pretty certain that Van der Poel will do well and that Swake and Van Aert will be the riders behind that. I think that Van Aert definitely will be able to... Um to be in second place, to be honest. I think that we will definitely see a very visible uh, one-two in terms of uh, riders. Uh, you know, Sveik will definitely be there, and on the course, the gaps are not going to be as big as uh, we have seen them in Boom when the return of Van Aert last year, but I tend to see a sort of a race where, where we're going to see a battle between Van der Poel and Van Aert, where Van der Poel is going to have some sort of the edge because of the course, because of the sand, uh, but that Van Aert, with uh, the power that he has, is definitely going to be able to um, to bring home second. Yeah, do you think it will be a duel already? Maybe something like we saw in 2016 when they famously went side by side? Because for the last reference, we need to go back two seasons. If we look at the races there, a course like Namur, which is basically a very good course for Van Aert, Van der Poel had the upper hand. On the more flat courses... For instance, like Hoes de Zolder, like, um, I think they raced against, yeah, they raced against each other in Baal. Where did they face each other as well? I think they faced each other in Hulst, which was also a win for Van der Poel. Van der Poel had the upper hand through most of those races. I mean, he only lost in Overijssel when he had the puncture. He lost in Dendermond, which was a perfect Wout van Aert course. It doesn't get more Wout van Aert than that. Than that. Herentals, I think Van der Poel also had a puncture there. And then Gavre, he got beaten by Pitcock. Do you think that Van Aert has made some step? Or that Van der Poel was less? Or Because to me, in the past seasons, when both were at the start line, Van der Poel always, at least on 
courses like this had like one or two percent more than Van de, Van Aert. Well, I think on the on a course like this, I would give the edge to to Van der Poel, but I think that Van Aert last year, in my opinion, was so good. It was really on, on in my opinion, on a very very high level, and it was obviously the discussion if um, Van Aert, you know, if Van der Poel was actually healthy and had had no issues with his back. How how Van der Poel would be you know would be coping with with the the the, the form that Van Aert was in, and I think that now we I'm not sure if you're actually already going to see a Van Aert that is going to be on that level that he was last year because I think the level he was last year was probably his best form, and only time will tell. I think that Van Aert is definitely not he didn't lose that much of last year, so he's definitely going to be. You know, joining the field with with some sort of a decent form, and if you remember the Belgium Championships well uh, of last year, which was you know was a lot of sand in it as well, and he was able to you know to cope with the sand quite well and demolish the field there. So I think that uh, it's going to be quite an interesting um, battle, maybe uh, with Van der Poel, maybe just having the edge because it's the first race of Van Aert. Van Aert definitely isn't a bad sand rider, and last season he looked very good, but. Then again, I feel that Van der Poel has just been a bit above, and now it's it's hard to judge. As you say, Van Aert was very strong last year, but it's again in perspective because yes, okay, he wins all races that he participates in except the Hulst. But let's be honest, the opposition he's facing, these are riders that Van der Poel and Van Aert normally leave very far behind, and. We saw that Van Aert was doing that a couple of times, but again, it's now it's extra significant because Van der Poel isn't there. But we shouldn't forget that in past seasons, Van der Poel and Van Aert almost always were able to ride a minute away of the rest, at least, even on faster courses. The gap Van der Poel would open a gap at the end of the first lap most of the times, and then. Van Aert would stay close for most of the time and then fall back. And then there would be a 20-ish second gap to Van Aert. And behind that, there would be a minutes gap. So it's last year, just because it's one rider doing it, it's like there's extra attention for it. There's extra shine for it. But it's not uncommon that we've seen Van der Poel do things like that either. I would say that it's going to be a relatively equal match in terms of form. Van der Poel is saying he's at 90% of his form now. If that is true, it's going to be scary if he reaches 100% in Hogerheide. I don't really think you can put a pure number on form, so we'll need to see. I think that, I think that 90% to 100% is definitely an over-exaggeration to make it more significant to people that he can improve, whilst in reality you're talking about single percentage points that you can still improve in such a short period of time but it's going to be interesting and i agree with you in the sand van der poel should have the upper hand but van Aert is not terrible and if there's a big running section in the sand involved i don't put it past van Aert to stay with van der poel longer but it should be interesting and i certainly don't rule out Sveik uh, just to make that one clear we go to the predictions <laughs> Yeah, if you want, you can uh, go first with the prediction for the men's race. Um, well, I think that um, that we both kind of came to a sort of a conclusion that that Van der Poel is uh, the ones to watch for for victory. So I think that I tend to agree with that. So I would say Van der Poel wins, second for Van Aert, and then third, Laurens Weg. That was the exact same podium I was going to go with. And you know what? I will just stick with that because... It's just what I feel, yeah, to mention one more name we didn't discuss, and I think he definitely deserves that. What about Lars van der Haar? He's been doing all right, but this course, sand, it's not something that he's bad in. We've seen him go through the sand super well in, well, sand pits, but still the point stand in New and Merckx Plus, he was pretty good. Yeah, I agree, but for me, it's just, I, I don't know, because... You know, normally he is definitely, in the, during the season, we've talked about it many times, that he has been going quite well. I don't know, with Hulst, uh, it's difficult to place him place him high on a podium, I think, in, in, in a course like this. And, you know, we're talking about 
two guys that that just return into the field that you know we know that they are able to be number one and number two and then we talk about somebody that is a specialist in the sand and is probably in the best shape of of, of, of his life at the moment so it's you know for me it's uh, difficult to then be like i'm gonna place van der haar up there but i think that van der haar is definitely an outsider for a podium for sure yeah i don't see a podium happening that quickly and as you say there's just a couple of better riders than him at the moment and that's completely fine it's not the best course for him so yeah for a podium and an upset against one of the biggest names you will need a different course and we will get to those courses eventually in the christmas period i think he can do pretty well already actually this weekend boom if that's dry it should be something for him in the christmas period we will get to a cross like herentals which should be good for him so i'm looking more towards those courses for him and the same goes for pitcock pitcock of course is a climber he would benefit even more on a course like gavre or boom or Baal. those courses are better for him than this that's why i would say he's going to end fourth today or not today this weekend because he's just simply better in climbing than in sand I, I just don't have a good feeling with him through the sand and it just gets confirmed every time that pictures of ostende world championships i can't get them off my vision like i just always remember him struggling there making splits making flips then when he came back in Merck's plus or Merck's plus well that didn't look fantastic either through the sand and yeah that's just something that sticks with me he's not too good in the sand so I don't see that magically having changed, but I'm happy to be proven wrong this weekend. Then let's go and talk about the women's race. Isam, you with your just a vibe, well, it turned out to be correct in Hulst because, well, it was a lot muddier than I had anticipated and it turned into a playground for Puk Petersen. What do you think here? Is this also going to be a playground for her or is it now time for Van Van Empel to strike back after what, losing three World Cups in a row? I'm sounds dramatic but three second places and uh, all the rest wins in the world cup is still a fantastic statistic to show yeah i mean uh, i was quite lucky i guess with with uh, with peter because i was uh, anticipating a faster course uh, to be honest and um, but with the course that it was if we i think if we both knew that the course was going to be like this we we both would give peter a little more chance than we normally have thought of if it was a faster course so um, I think that in the end, you know, Peters uh, did everything right, and but I have a feeling that she gained some confidence after Overijs. It looks that she is um, in a sort of a, a good mood, and you know, it's it's going well for her. Obviously, with two wins already in in the World Cup, but you know, you're not gonna lose that over over a week. So I think that she will definitely come to Antwerp with the intention of winning, and while. A couple of weeks back that was just an intention uh, right now she's already you know she did it already twice and she's definitely hungry for more so i think that um yeah that she definitely has a chance i think she's quite okay in the sand as well peterson is definitely definitely good in the sand but van empel can also go through the sand well from the sections that we have seen in beekse bergen sometimes make some mistakes but overall she can handle it okay but you know, Antwerp is probably going to show us a little bit more about that. Well, I might actually be looking most at Shirin van Androoy. I think in terms of form, she is definitely not the best of the front runners. But if I recall back to the World Cup in Kokseide last year, van Androoy was flying through the stands. Like the Paul Herreigers June, fabulous passages there. Super good. Pietersen... Her race in Coxide just didn't stand out to me. I don't remember all too much, but what I remember was that it was scrappy. It was almost like she was digging herself in, where Van Empel was also going through it fast. But the impression Van Androoy made on me there was definitely a lot better than what I remember from Pieterse there. Pieterse, on the other hand, okay, in Zonhoven she did fine, but Zon how much of a sand cross is Zonhoven? It, it involves a lot of sand, but it's not the same sand skill required here. So, I would maybe look at Van Androoy, but then again, the form difference that we've seen in Hulst and 
also an overrise on the uphill sections. I don't know if you can overcome such a big deficit in terms of form by compensating for it with good sand technique. I don't think the sand here will be that tough. If we were in Coxide, I would probably predict her. Here I think she'll be in the mix. She might be able to beat Peterse, but it should be a very good course for Van Empel. She says her form maybe isn't as good now and that the woe factor has dropped off a bit because she isn't in her best form after the European Championships as she's now mainly training endurance for the world or for the road season. But yeah, I don't really buy into that too much because in Hulst her form level seemed good. She just didn't seem to be able to match Peterson technically. On this course, different technique, no mud, it's going to be dry. Van Empel with her technique through the sand, which looks super good. She should have this. Yeah, I definitely think that her chances are going to be to be higher than than it was on the course, like like we had for for Hulst. And you know, in Overijs it was also a bit more difficult for her. But I, you know, what I kind of saw in Van Empel, which you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, in both Overijs and Hulst, the moment she is kind of put in a difficult position and she has to chase a little bit more and she has to. You know, she kind of feels that it is going to be difficult to 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 get the win. The mistakes kind of creep up, and it, it's I don't know. I kind of notice it in Overijs where uh, Van Empel normally wouldn't be making those kind of mistakes. Obviously, it was very hard course, and even Peterson was having one or two moments, and you know, it's quite normal. But I think in both Hulst as well, it was also some some silly mistakes. On, on, on certain places where I was like if you were in the right position and you were probably in first you wouldn't be making those mistakes but you can correct me if if, if you if you see something else in, in that uh, regard well I think in Hulls the case was pretty obvious Peterson was better technically they were evenly matched in terms of form in terms of the physique so Van Empel needed to make up time somewhere and she did so by taking insane risks she was going way above her ability and managed to save a potential crash a handful of times. But it's the same as what Ton and I discussed in the Hills podcast. If you keep going, going that far above your capabilities, at some point you're going to pay for it. That happened to Van Empel. She paid cash. It was weird that it happened once she had actually closed that gap because she went into the lead. But yeah, hmm. Peters also made crashes that, or made mistakes there that led to crashes in the same downhill. So, does she, like, when the pressure is there and when she is behind, yes, she makes mistakes, but I think this is more part of an all or nothing mentality that she's like, I need to try something and I don't want to just sit in for a second. So, I don't really look into it too much. I think she's been under pressure a couple of times this season and when actually riders were in her wheel, look at Tabor, and she manages fine there. Okay, not the most challenging course or the most challenging conditions, but it's only when she's being put into the defense and knows that the only way she's going to come back is by taking a lot of risks. That's when things go wrong and that makes sense. I haven't seen her make too many silly mistakes in terms of crashes or slips when she was a first or second wheel when the pressure was being put on in that way only when she was in a chasing position yeah that that yeah that, i, I kind of noticed that and you know like you said it's also if you have to compensate a little bit more in terms of technique and you have to take certain corners with the same amount of speed or similar speed to what peters is you know he's taking those corners and you know you have some sort of a deficit you obviously are going to take some more risks and that that can kind of bring in this um yeah this kind of level of risk in in terms of crashing because you're kind of going into unknown territory and you know i don't know if peters is going to be able to put her in such a position in antwerp because normally it's going to be a little bit faster but with the turns for Vecca has put in this course i don't know it's uh it's difficult to 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 say right now but I think it will be a better matched course for, for both of them. So it will be a bit more of a battle, I think. And if the weather forecast holds, it's not going to be muddy. It's going to be dry. It's going to be fast. No rain, not a lot of rain this week. It's going to be freezing overnight. So it's going to be fast. Fun and fast. That's what it's going to be here. 
I would therefore in these conditions favor Van Empel. Van Anrooy and Pietersen, probably the biggest opponent. News about Lucinda Brandt. Brandt is having some issues with her hand. There's an infection in it where they place the plate over it. So that's going to be a bit of a struggle. Therefore, don't expect too much from her here. We do have to mention Del Carmen Alvarado, Salen Del Carmen Alvarado, to say it completely. She's been pretty much the fourth woman this season. And what about Nisa Betsma? Tough weeks in the World Cup, but this should be a course for her. What do you think about these two riders, Issa? Well, I think I start off with the, the one you mentioned first. Uh, Alvarado definitely, um, you know, has been uh, showing herself quite well with with um, Van Empel and Petersen. She's been able to, um, you know, to be fighting for the top five behind them. Um, so I think that she's definitely in, you know, in terms of form, capable of uh, trying to fight for a podium. But I think it is visible that there is some sort of a some sort of a gap between her and uh, Peterson and Van Empel. I think that she kind of knows that as well, why she's will probably also be opting, um, you know, to choose from here and there some other races where she knows that, that the two will not be starting, X2O trophy, obviously, uh, and also sometimes Super Prestige where she's doing well. So I think that, you know, she kind of knows that it's difficult this season so far to beat the two, but she's definitely motivated and she's giving it her all every race. And yeah, I think that in terms of how she's going uh, at the moment, she's you know, always kind of close by. So if one of the two has some sort of an issue or not their day, she's definitely able to, um, you know, to capitalize on that and, you know, gain a position or two uh, more and, you know, be on the podium or even potentially on the top step of the podium. Alvarado, of course, won the Downacross Coxide in 2019. She's definitely a good sand rider and she has a good balance on the bike, which means she is able to do well on this course. The technique, again, it's hard to judge based on this course, but with the amount of corners, I don't expect there to be a big group at the front of the race for a long time. It should, despite the circumstances, be relatively easy to create some sort of gap. They also placed barriers in this lap. They are somewhere in the middle of it. So unlike in Hulst, they are not a potentially, well, they can be a decisive feature, but not one towards the end of the lap. This course is built around sand being the decisive feature in the final lap. Yeah, Alvarado could do well. I think she can hope for a podium because as you say, it's clear that the others, or the youngsters, the young three, as they now call them in Belgium, could be again having the upper hand. And again, playing into that is the fact that Alvarado will be fighting for the Super Prestige the day before with Betsma, who also won Coxide. It might just not work out for them as they are hoping to do all these double weekends when the young three focus on the... World Cup only, and I will not be calling them the young three, I will be calling them the big three, because that's what they deserve. Yeah, I actually didn't mention Betsema, but, you know, uh, Betsema overall is, is is in a moment right now where she's kind of struggling, and I guess struggling is, is, an, is an understatement of what, what is going on right now with her. I think that there is also, I don't think there's a real clarification for it, she's not feeling well, I guess, but it's Every race is not really... Uh, the last couple of races have not been going the the best. Obviously, Kortrijk was a race where she performed well, but you know then kind of missed out maybe on a little bit more and was in a position where it was probably for a bit more difficult to to, to get more than, than that third place. But it's... You know, the World Cup hasn't been her greatest uh, <laughs> kind of uh, racing so far because... I think the last three World Cups, I think all of them have been like what tenth or something, but but definitely a long shot away from from the top five. So yeah, it's it's definitely not 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 great. So I think for her, Antwerp would be a good moment to bounce back from that. It's been such a mixed bag because, as you say, these World Cups they have not been going amazing. But in Kortrijk, the day before Hulst, she looked fine, and Merckx she also looked fine, keeping up the same pace as Alvarado after the first lap. Neil also was fine, she was fighting for the win there, but then these World Cups, they just don't pan out, so 
I'm not going to draw too many conclusions that the fact that she's racing double weekends is already costing her, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. If it starts becoming a real pattern that these World Cups are going poorly after she is racing another race on the day before, then it's fair to conclude that. For now, I would just put it down to circumstances and that is also fine. So, yeah, I would stick to that for now and then we'll see. I think Betsma should be fine. Because of these poor performances in the World Cup, I'm not going to be predicting her for a podium. My podium will be Fem van Empel, Sherin van Androy and Puk Pietersen. What about yours? Or do you still want to put forward any other names? Um, no, I think that um, the ones that we have mentioned are the ones that we have to um, we have to look out for. Yeah, no, 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 Cata Blanca Vash, for instance. Ooh, <laughs> that's true. That's true, but I, that's I think that is going to be a a difficult one to place because you know coming back from um, from a little bit of rest and also a training camp and you know just not really I think the focus was not really laid on, on cyclocross that much from what I have seen so it's difficult to place her somewhere right now you know and and for me it's going to be difficult to think that she's already going to be. Uh, fighting it out for a podium spot, but you know we know that Fash is always able to um, you know to to bring the best of her in 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 some of the races, and I think that a top five is not unlikely, but you know we have to see how how she will cope with the sand. Yeah, because with Fash, you always need to be careful. She doesn't ride to the next beach before she finally makes the corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but you know, uh, is Foss starting as well or not? No, no, Marianne Foss. Um, a bit weird, but she's taking some breaks. We discussed this earlier as well. Maybe she's focusing on some of the smaller races to regain confidence. What we can say is that Prevost is racing. Again, also no super high expectations for her. She will be starting on the fourth row. I am still hoping for the same and that's that she is able to move forward through the field and work herself towards the top 10 and that would already be a very good result. The level is just so high and Prevo, she's more of a rider for courses like Namur where we had the European Championships. Then it's still time for you to make your prediction, Isam, for the women's race. This is not the vibe but it's just I think that Van Empel is... is, is um... Is, is a bit cracking right now. She's uh, she's struggling a little bit. So I think that Van, em- Van Empel will lose out on, on, on Pietersen with, you know, how Pietersen is going the last couple of weeks. I would give the benefit of the doubt to Pietersen and, you know, I think that Pietersen will take the win in Antwerp and then I would say definitely that Van Empel is then going to be second. And third place would be for... I think that Alvarado can clutch third. Uh, you know, Van Anroy is definitely able to do so, but I think that 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 Alvarado is definitely, yeah, in in position to to be able to snatch that third plus spot. Interesting. We will see. We'll be there actually on the ground in the cold. Thank you for being here, Isam, and uh, we'll see who is right this week in terms of predictions. Yeah, let's hope that I'm uh, that I'm right again. <laughs> let's see. We will be back this weekend with podcasts about the Super Prestige in Boom and then the World Cup in Antwerp. Thanks everyone for listening and we will see you guys around this weekend. Goodbye.